Number 75. The white pigment TiO2 is prepared by the reaction of titanium tetrachloride, which is TiCl4, with water vapor in the gas phase. And they give the reaction, which I rewrote for you guys here. So I have TiCl4 gas plus 2H2O gas yields TiO2 solid plus 4 HCl gas. Now here comes the question. It says, how much heat is evolved, aka produced, in the production of exactly one mole of TiO2 solid under standard state conditions. Okay, so they're basically asking for how much heat, so like a kilojoule value, right? Joules are a unit of heat. When we produce one mole under standard state conditions, under standard state conditions means that we have to get standard values in a chart. So what I did was I went in the back of the textbook to find out what the delta H values were, and I picked delta H because that's the heat letter, right? Delta H for heat. If you search these numbers, you're probably going to see a chart with three different values in it. We only care about delta H. We don't care about G or S, but that's coming. Good things are ahead, guys. <laughs> but anyway, in this case, we only care about delta H. Now, I just want to say... Just be careful. Some of these, especially these two, there are two forms. There's TiCl4 that's a liquid, and there's also H2O that's a liquid. Make sure you take the gas values because then the whole number is going to be off, right? So these are the numbers. So now, how am I going to get the total amount of heat evolved from the whole reaction? These are just how much how much heat is produced when we formed these individual compounds. Well, it's that, it's that formula, right? We've been seeing it time and time again. It's this one, right? It's the delta H, products minus reactants formula. The, del whole, the whole delta H of the reaction is just the sum, that this symbol just means add them up, sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. And these little notches just mean that it's all taken from standard values, aka in the textbook. So now, how do I do that? I got to get the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. So I need one big number for the reactants and one big number for the products. Well, let's, let's get to that, right? So the first thing we're going to do is you always take the numbers that you found in the back of the textbook and multiply them by how many you have in your equation. Now, I already see that there are coefficients. So, for example, there's like a 2 here, and there's a 4 for the HCl. So that means that it's balanced. But always make sure that your equation's balanced before you do any math, all right? So I have 1 TiCl4, right? I didn't see a number there, so it's just 1. So I just multiply the negative 763.2 by 1. There was 2 H2O gases, so... I'm going to multiply this number by 2. I don't see a number in front of TiO2, so that means that there's 1. So I'm just going to multiply that by 1. And then there's 4 HCLs, so I multiply the negative 92.307 by 4. Now I need to sum them up. Add the two numbers together. Literally, it's TiCl4 plus. There's an addition sign here. H2O. So I have to add these two. And the same thing here, TiO2 plus HCl, so I add these two. Let me maybe just pull this back. Beautiful. Okay. So now let's get one number for the reactants and one number for the products. Let's plug it in. So let's see. Negative 763.2 plus 2 times a negative 241.82. I get a negative 1,246. 0.84, and now let's see, for the product side, negative 944 plus 4 times a negative 92.307, I get negative 1,313.228. Beautiful. Now, it's just products minus reactants. How simple is that? So the whole delta H for my whole reaction is the product number, negative 1,313.228, and I'm going to minus the, uh, the reactants, negative 
and 46.84. Keep change change when you're minusing a negative. This is just like adding, right? If that's easier, if you want to plug that into the calculator. Okay, so let's see. This plus, or maybe I'll just put in minus that answer. And I get negative 66.388, and that's kilojoules, right? Now, they're specifically asking for the production of exactly one mole of TiO2. So, when we, usually we just say this is kilojoule per mole, right? But we just want to be certain. If I am saying it's 4TiO2 and not any of the other compounds, I'm just going to say that it's mole of TiO2. And now the number that you put on the bottom is the coefficient number that you have for that compound. So in this case, it will be 1. But let's just say that they asked for, you know, the 2 moles of H2O. I would have to put a 2 here, and then this number would actually change. But since it's 66.344 divided by 1, right, it would just be the same amount. So that's just like a trick, guys. So how much heat is actually evolved? Negative 66.388 kilojoules. And the negative just means that the heat is being released. Okay, so 66.388 kilojoules will be made, and it will be released into the environment. Yeah, hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. Love seeing how you guys are doing. Let's keep studying hard. You guys got this. Good luck on any tests that's coming up. And yeah, I'll talk to you all in later lessons, all right? Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.